a name that levels mountains Comes down highways through the sea I've seen his power unravel battles Right in front of me There's a faith that stands in fire Sends Goliath to his knees Seen his praise of rebel shackles Right off my feet That's the power of your name just a mansion makes a way. Giants fall and strongholds break, and there is healing. That's the power that I claim. It's the same that rolled the grave. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. Church, how is everyone? Turn back into winter a little bit. It was dipping dots. It was it was dipping dots was coming down. That's what your wife said, Jim. It was dipping dots. Huh? Did she? Right on. Welcome to church. Uh, announcements are running up there. End times class is coming the 21st. You guys, well, anyways, you guys can uh, run through that when it comes back up. How about praise reports? Praise reports. Yep, Mr. Tavner. So, um, late last week, one of my co-workers um, was up at Indian Lake, you know, helping doing some plant stuff up there, and he 
sends me this message with a photo attached and said, I don't know who this lady was. She was volunteering up there. She said, hey, I know Rob. Take a picture with him and, I'll, and send it to him. And sure enough, it's Beth Ann. <laughs> <laughs> she, said, she didn't even tell me your name. She just stopped working long enough to come get the photo. I didn't even have a chance. I was out of the day. She was already turning around getting back to work. So you're I'm you're everywhere, I'm Beth Ann. I'm thankful for the uh, Lord's work. name of Jesus being spread around and just for people that, 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 that need, need the call. Right, right on. Right on. Very good. Very good. Praise the Lord. Great report. Yep. Sunday service, I had a little mishap and fell down my steps. Oh no! And I hit my head really hard, and I still have a lump on my head. But I didn't fall down the second step. Step. So Christ uh, Lord. Well, that was a good thing. But it could have been a very bad ending on Sunday morning. But God saw me. Okay. Saw fit to spare me, and I was thanking Him. We're thankful. Yeah. yeah, I got a lump on my head, but you know I'm hard headed. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of okay. I, I was praising him. Yeah, praise the Lord. Been a lot yeah, out you're okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm sore. <laughs> yeah, sure. But, yeah, bump on the head. It's right. good. It's good. Commiserate with Vicky. Because it's worse. Right on. Praise reports. Praise reports. <laughs> praise reports. <laughs> okay. Pray, pray, or what? I'm trying to say that. Prayer requests. Prayer requests. Three times back. Sorry, Denise. That was very rude to make fun of me during your prayer request. Yes. Can't hear you. Put the mic up. I know this wants the whole world to know, but I mean, he's up there on the prayer list, and he's just he's really close to the doctor tomorrow, but he just really did a sick job. So we need to be praying. Dan, Dan Blake, we, we need to cover him in prayer. He's very, very ill. Not sure how much he wants to say to everybody, but uh, we really need to pray for our brother, Dan Blake. Yeah, uh, Shine called. Uh, <laughs> She went to the doctor about her back and everything, and she's, I told her we all need to get her on a rack or something, stretch her back out, her back's all messed up, and yeah. she's going to get in my eyes, and just keep praying for her, and I heard on the news where the tornado down here in Lawrence County, where my wife's uh, brother and stepmother yeah. were down there, and so I called them, and they got hit with a tornado, and uh, her mom, stepmom lost part of the roof, and Everybody down there is without power, so wow. just pray for them in Lawrence County. Right on. Right on. Lawrence County. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Jason's really sick. Okay. Jason, yeah, he's not here. Okay. We're we'll praying for Brother Jason as well. Right on. Okay. John. Yep. Um, I asked several um, months ago to prepare for my son in law who is. Jordan right now, um, active duty. Um, got a call from my daughter today that they actually uh, had to shoot down a drone, another drone attack from Iran. Um, praise the Lord, it was successful. This time it didn't get through, but just she, she's two weeks from delivery and just, you know, just the whole situation is really tough. So we'll just pray for both of them. Just appreciate it. Is it Jordan again? And Andy. Okay, let's go to the Lord. Lord God, we praise your name. We praise you that our sister Cindy um, took a tumble, but she's okay. We praise you, Lord God, that you spared her from it being any worse and going any farther. Praise you for our sister Beth Ann once again. I feel like every every time we turn around, the Lord Jesus and Beth Ann, I pray that you just continue to strengthen her, continue to use her, keep her funded, keep her, keep her moving, Lord God. Praise you for her. Um, be with our sister and cover her with your blessing, Lord God. Um, Lord God, we think about our brother Dan. God, we're asking for healing. Lord Jesus, we're asking for healing. I pray that you, you give he and Lisa peace and let them just reach out and cling on to you, Lord God. Let them hang on to you. Touch them, Lord Jesus, and heal them, Lord God. 
I know he's, I know he's ill. I know the stuff he's on is making him ill. I understand all that, God. Give him comfort, even in it right now, as he's fighting this thing. Give him comfort. We pray for his healing, Lord Jesus. By your power, Lord God, and for your glory. Yeah. Heal our brother. Yeah. We think about shine. <laughs> pray that you comfort her and ease her pain right now with her back. We pray that you touch her, Lord God. Pray that she's reaching out to you, even as she's talking to doctors, Lord God. Be with her and comfort her. Be with uh, Andy and Johnny and Jody's daughter. I can't think of her name. Give them peace, Lord God. I pray that her uh, delivery goes with no problem whatsoever. We're, we're praying and, and, and uh, claiming a healthy child and a good delivery and just be with his safety while he's over there. Just be with him. Cover him and his whole flight, Lord God. Be with him. Keep him safe and bring him back home. Give her peace. Give her peace while her man's over there serving, Lord God. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We bow before you and give you all the glory and honor, Lord God. We glorify your name. We thank you for our blessings, Lord Jesus. We reach out to you and praise you in our struggle. You're everything to us. We glorify your name. We bring your worship. In your name, amen. 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 Let's worship. Let's stand and worship.
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want Your name is power. 
rocks will cry out. You are worthy. To many people, it's just songs. And I always say, ask myself, does it matter? You know what my response is, always is? Yes, it matters. Your whispers of praise call on the ears of God. And he doesn't need it. He's God no matter what. Boy, when he hears our voice and we just begin to say, Lord, you are this to me. I remember, just like we sang earlier, Lord, I remember when you were faithful at that moment. I remember in the darkest nights when I cried out to you, you showed up. You healed my friend. Are you comforted? Each, all of us at one time or another. And we begin to just praise him. We begin to be grateful. Hey, I'm telling you, we need something to turn the tide in our minds because everywhere else, there's no gratefulness anymore. And when we come, even if it's just whispers, even if we feel like it or we don't feel like it, I, I tell you, sometimes I try harder the less I feel like it. Because I ask myself that question. And so when you come to church, when you ask yourself that question, does it matter if I praise? And I guarantee you, you go, yes. It does. It does. Lord, I pray that we come as a people knowing that it matters that we lift you up, that we give you glory. It's not about us. It's about you and what you've done and what you're doing, who you are, and that you're honored. And you're placed on a throne in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. May we be that kind of people even more than ever because it does matter.
da 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 Thank you again and again All that I have is a Hallelujah Hallelujah I'd like to talk to a few of you after church. Can I talk to you after church for a minute? That'd be okay? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right, hey everybody, good to see ya. I'm happy today I can walk. I, I've been having trouble getting up here walking. My knee's been pinching real bad. Good to see everybody, glad you're here. Uh, did, was it snowing? It was trying to snow. Welcome to November, right? November here in Ohio. Man, you get all four seasons this week, don't you? You get all four of them. So, uh. Good to see everybody. What's that? It's Ohio. It's Ohio. Okay. Glad to be with you. I just feel like I got some life in me tonight. I'm ready to go. Ready to go. Okay, let's get going. Father, we thank you for time together. We do, we do. We thank you for all those that have come out here, Lord, on a blustery uh, April, <laughs> Woo, Wednesday night. We thank you, Lord, that we get crowns, Lord, we get crowns someday. And Lord, for being here tonight, we get an extra jewel in those things. We're thankful. So thankful, Lord, we're collecting those rubies and putting them in our crowns. Father, we're really, really grateful. We enjoy that singing time so much. And words, Lord, were so good in our hearts and our minds, Lord. Just, Lord, that's, that's our heart towards you. I pray, Lord, that you just meet us right here, right now. There's these moments we have in the week, Lord, where we're where to hear your word, hear your word preached. God, that adds to us faith. Faith comes by hearing. So, Lord, just empower us. Just, just plug, just push us, fill us full, Lord, with the things you want us to know and hear from you, God. Inspire the preacher tonight, Lord. Put it on him. Put it on the preacher, Lord. Let us have life and energy and, and Lord, just your, your anointing, your presence, your power, Lord, to, to know and understand these things. We talk about your eternal word. Bless our time together, Lord, and we'll give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 20 is where we're at tonight. Now we'll do this review again. I probably ought to do it on a slide. I think it's maybe more effective, but we're in Chronicles, right? Chronicles is covering the kings of Judah. Okay, that's the kings of the southern kingdom. Ezra writes Chronicles after... The, 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 the exile period. So long after these kings, after the Jews have failed God completely, were taken away to Babylon for 70 years and come back, Ezra writes these words so he can encourage the people and how God that had, had been with them through the kings of Judah over the centuries, over the time that God was for them. If they would do right, God would be for them, right? So we keep looking at these kings and we see the big stories. And uh, for maybe the fourth week in a row here, we're in a, another major battle, another big battle. You know, we, we see a couple of kings ago, 500,000. They conquered 500,000. Last week or so, we, we realized they ran into an army of a million we don't know the statistics on how many they killed, but they might have killed more in that battle. The, the Bible just doesn't record the number of people killed. Tonight we're in another battle. We have another big battle. And I'm going to comment on it as we get into the battle. But um, this idea of in our Christian world, these were to the, the nation that believed, the people that were believers, right? God would be with them, God would give them peace, God was for them, God would bless them, but he didn't keep them from battles. You understand that? Battles still came. Now God was wanting to give them the victory, and if they had done right, acted right, especially the kings, you know, they, they had leadership, godly leadership, they were making right choices, they weren't going to not have battles, but they were going to be victorious in their battles. Everybody get that? You get it? So, when we apply that to us, listen, we're the people that are trying to do right. God doesn't protect us from battles, but what he says is as we do right, 
we'll have victory in battles. God will use that stuff for good in our life and we'll see increase in our life. Whatever spiritual growth, you know, faith growth, all those things. God, God doesn't care about your bank account. God doesn't care about the stuff you have. It's all going to burn. It's really all going to go away. It's really, listen, five minutes from now we're going to be in heaven, right? Just in, five, just in a real short time we're going to be in heaven. It ain't about accumulating stuff, you know. The Bible even talks about we're moss. And rust, decay, it's not about any of that stuff. I guess, I, I guess the Lord knew that I would have a pickup truck that had rust. You know what I mean? So, hey, I'm good with it, right? Because I don't need it very much longer. You know what I mean? So, it isn't about that stuff at all. So, these, these biblical, Old Testament, biblical, biblical patterns are these ideas that we're going to fight battles. Right? And we're trying to look at what these men did, what they got right, what they got wrong you know, in, in their lifetime, but there were moments of battle in their life, and they had, to, they had to choose God. When they didn't choose God, they got beat, right? And we've seen it week after week now as time is kind of going along. So in Second Chronicles, we pick up a new king here, a guy named Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. Okay, And it happened after this that the people of Moab and the people of Ammon and the others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat was a good king. And this is actually the third chapter in 2 Chronicles, actually the fourth chapter in 2 Chronicles where we read about him. In chapter 17, he walked in the ways of David he taught God's words in the city of Judah. So he actually sent Levites around to the towns to teach God's word to people because they got so far away from it. Um, and he had a long period or a long time of peace. In chapter 18, Jehoshaphat gets aligned with Ahab against Syria. And the Lord sends a lying spirit. It's kind of a weird, if you want a weird, a weird, a weird, a weird, want a weird, a weird chapter... If you want to read a weird chapter, you ought to read 18, chapter 18 of 2 Chronicles. Hey, because the Lord, listen, the Lord sends a lying spirit on these prophets to tell Ahab that he's going to win this battle, but he's not doing right. The bad thing was uh, Jeho Jehoshaphat had aligned himself with him. There's a lot of big words here for me. You know, I, I struggle with big words. Anyhow, so... Hey, in the, in the 18th chapter, the Lord sends a lying spirit upon some prophets to tell Ahab he's going to win. And then a true prophet comes from Judah and, and says to him, you're going to die. And he says to that prophet, he says, you always speak things bad about me. And pretty much the prophet says, you're always doing bad. And sure enough, they go to battle in chapter 18. You know, the, the only time the kings from Israel are mentioned in Chronicles is when there's some in interaction with the kings from Judah. So the king from Judah aligned himself, Jehoshaphat aligned himself with the evil king, and they go to battle together, and they get their tails whipped. And, and the king of Israel, um, what's his name? Ahab dies. Here's what he does. Here's how wicked Ahab is in chapter 18. Ahab says, listen, uh, you dress as the king when we go to battle. I'll dress as just a, a common soldier. You know? And it was almost like he was setting, because the, the, the army of Syria that was coming after him, they were looking to kill the king of Israel. But Jehoshaphat dressed like the king. So they went after Jehoshaphat, and God caused a distraction, and Jehoshaphat got away because he was the good king, and because the, the bad king, Ahab, dressed like a regular shoulder, soldier, the, the, the Bible says that one guy just got just slung an arrow, and it went right between his armor and killed him. It's kind of a... There's lying spirits in there, and there's this thing where, and, and it's like God just lets the righteous escape. And I, I can just see, you know, I'm this big, 
end time Bible study or, you know, and, and the righteous just, listen here, let me tell you this, we just get out of here just in time. You know what I mean? We just get out of here just in time. God lets us escape, you know, some kind of diversion, and, and we just get out of here, right? And the unrighteous, you hate to say it, but they perish, Right? If you're not living for the Lord, you've got no long-term future, you know, that's anything you want to, I'm just saying, right? So the king, who thought he was so big and bad, he thought he would trick, uh, and they might go after uh, Jehoshaphat, ended up just by accident, I shouldn't say accident, just in a battle scene, the bad guy gets killed, the bad king gets killed, okay? So, in chapter 19... King Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat institutes more biblical, more godly reforms in the country. He's, he's saying, hey, we're going to serve the Lord, we're going to serve the Lord, we're going to serve the Lord, we're going to serve the Lord in chapter 19. And then we get to chapter 20. And it happened after this that the people of Moab and the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. So, I don't know if you remember this story. But when they crossed the Jordan, you know, they had opportunity to wipe out these. They were a big army. Uh, Joshua was a big army, man. And the Lord said, don't, don't, don't worry about these guys. There'd be a battle later. You know, God's got a timing on everything. God's got this, got this whole thing understood. They had not raised their head the entire time. But they sense weakness. The enemy will see us seek since weakness, having trouble. Since weakness, right? And he'll come at your weak spots. I, I always say, you know, what's really, really, really important is for you to understand what you're gifted in, and you need to be doing that for the Lord, right? But the other thing you need to know is what you're very vulnerable or very weak in, right? If it's your eyes, don't put your eyes someplace. If it's your ears, don't put your ears someplace, right? If it's, you know, how you think, you got to Shut that room in your brain and nail that door shut, you know? You got to be positive in who you are and, 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 and work in the things you're gifted in and don't let the enemy defeat you in the things you're weak in because there's all, all of us have weaknesses in different areas, right? You all understand that? The enemy will come after that weakness every time. He'll come after you generally in things that are common to you, things that, you know, have tripped you before, Right? things that he knows he can get you the enemy is very strategic in how he's working with you okay so at this particular moment in time and God understands time these two enemies raise their heads and they say we're going to go get Judah we're going to get them time well their armies are big and some came and told Jehoshaphat saying a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea what sea? Well, what do you see in here? Yeah. And there's how that sea, they're coming. A multitude coming from Syria. And they are in that place, which is, I love, uh, how, how do you say it? In Gedi. Uh, there's just something about that sounds, in Gedi. I like that whole thing. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to speak, to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. Well, have we done right? The multitude's coming. We're trying. I've been teaching the whole country about serving the Lord. I, I've instituted all these reforms. We, we've We've, we've tried our best to go from city to city to city to city teaching the word of God to people. And you know, our enemy raises up his head. I, I, I don't know how you feel, but, but a guy told me one time, I was in a, a service with, uh, with the, the pastor from the Brownsville church that had a million people come through his church in that big Pensacola revival. And um, he was saying... That the enemy doesn't know what God's about to do, but he can see when it's about to rain. He can see the, the, the clouds forming 
and he can see blessing or see goodness. He can, he can look, the devil can look at your, you trying to do good and realize if you ever get started in that, if you ever, you know, get going in that, so the enemy awful, often tries to come before the blessing comes, hey, and just knock the faith right out of you. Sometimes I feel like when the enemy's coming at me hard, that means something good is coming. Does that make sense? I'm a big believer that God has good for me. I'm his kid. God, God's got all these plans for me that I do not know, right? I believe what Jeremiah says, you know, he's got a plan for me. He does, he does, he does, you know. I don't think I'm nearly finished. I think the best days of my life, I, I think the Lord moving, the Lord doing it, it, the best days are still ahead of me. I believe, I believe that the final scene of the, of the play is going to be the best scene of them all. Right? I believe in the power of God. I believe in the miracle of God. I believe in the healing of God. I believe in all that stuff. I believe God's going to do that among his people. Right? I can't wait to see what's ahead. You know, my body's getting old and tired. Hey, but I can't wait to see what the Lord's doing. Right? My wife's had a sick headache for two days. I'm thinking, oh, what's the Lord going to do now? What's the Lord going to do, you know? What's the Lord doing? And I've, I've watched in my life, when the strongest attacks come and I'm able to weather those strong attacks, the Lord usually has something real good for me after that, right? I, I don't know if you see your life as this, this I don't know how to say, almost this uh, story or this um, unfolding journey that you're in, but the Lord is with you in it all. Does that make sense? And he knows everything you struggle with. He, he probably gave the enemy permission, you know what I mean, to come at you the way he's coming at you because he believes your faith will stand. Does that make sense? He, my boy can handle that, and you watch. When he gets through that, I, I'll bless him. I'm going to bless him for that, right? Just to try to encourage you because what happens so often to us is the... The enemy is able to rob all of our joy. The enemy is able to rob all of our peace. The enemy causes us to fear something like this. He, he, listen, and I don't mean this for ladies, but ladies are worse at it than men. He causes ladies to go to the worst case scenario every time. Right? Oh! Remember hee haw? Gloom, despair. Me, oh, me, oh. You know when they sing, oh, 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 Why do we, do, why, listen, why do we do that? Why do we do that? But Jehoshaphat knew without the Lord he was, you know, so in the middle of his battle, no matter what that was, in the middle of his battle, he says, hey, we're going we're gonna to seek the Lord and we're going to fast. We're going we're gonna to just begin to be still before the Lord and wait on what the Lord wants to speak to us. And we'll do whatever the Lord says. Do you know how many silly things the Lord have told people of God to do, you know? I think, and we don't talk about it enough, but just to be still before the Lord at some period in every day. is good. I probably have less struggle than you do because my mind isn't much. And I can kind of cancel a lot of the stuff. They say about men, you know, Men have this ability to think about absolutely nothing and still breathe. You've heard that, right? So men are a little bit better about being able to still their mind. I actually, this sounds crazy. I, forgive me. You know, from the original curse, Eve got this curse. You know, she'd have all kinds of trouble in childbearing. She'd have a desire for her husband, and he would rule over her. And he would rule over her is what that curse was upon her, Right? And I actually believe the only reason why men got the authority to rule over their wives is because they have a little bit more ability to clear their mind and hear God. And men, Christian men, ought to be able... 
to clear their mind and hear God. You hear me? Your wives want you to clear your mind and hear God. They really do. We, we honey, we got to go the right direction. I don't always know the answer, but I, I know we better do it God's way or we're dead. We're, we're done. We, we have lived so, I don't know how to say this, we have lived so out there. If we made a move, we'd fall off the edge. You know, a bad move, we, we can't. So, Lord, you've got to direct our path. You've got to show us what to do. God, we've we got to be moving in you and living in you. One mistake, one mistake sets us back, right? And we got no time to be set back. You know what I mean? So Jehoshaphat feared the Lord. He knew there was a multitude. It didn't matter that his fathers and his father fathers and all them had fought a battle. Now this one was his battle. Right? This one was his battle. He was going to have to fight this battle. He was going to have to get this right. And so he got still before the Lord and said, Lord, I want to get this right. So Judah gathered together and asked help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of, of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? I, I like how he prays this. Are you... Lord... I think you're the God of heaven. I believe you are. Now we can apply this to us. I Sometimes I he prays this kind of feeling like it's backwards, but I think he's just saying, Lord, I recognize you as the God of heaven. Uh, are you not? I mean, I know you are is what he's really kind of saying. Do you, not, do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nations? I know you do. I mean, we could talk about all that. I think it's Daniel that says God's the one that raises up leaders and takes them down. Listen, none of us, uh, i got to be careful. We have leadership in our country that God put there for the purpose of bringing us to the end. Does that make any sense? We don't like some of the ungodliness and some of the craziness and all that stuff. But but God put him there because God had a timetable, right? And, and, uh, well... And because the nation falls into wickedness, judgment is coming upon our nation. And I'm not saying that because I want it. I'm just saying that if, if God doesn't, that's how God does, right? When people don't, when nations don't do right, he gives them mercy for an extended period of time. He's blessed and blessed and blessed. But as we fall farther away from the Lord, there's a point where God intervenes. You know... Uh, that eclipse is Monday. I think they said it's supposed to be cloudy, maybe even rainy. Have you heard that? All these people coming to the county. To... They said last week when we, the United States, did not stand with Israel in that UN vote, within hours of that, that big cargo ship hit that bridge and that bridge fell down. The X crosses right in the Mississippi Valley. There's the, what did I say? Did I say eclipse? I'm sorry. The eclipse crosses right there in the Mississippi Valley. That's that new Mandarin fault, right? And some, some Bible theologians are saying, hey, that bridge collapsing when we didn't stand with Israel was a sign of what's to come because earthquakes will follow this cro eclipse crossing in the Mississippi Valley and a lot of Mississippi bridges are going to fall. That that bridge was just a, a future sign of something that's coming. Now, I, I didn't know this, but just looking today, 1999 and then 2006, there was another X that crossed, did you know this? Turkey. A specific city, and there was a specific reason, and I don't, I'm not smart enough to tell you all that. But within seven days of that X crossing, they had the biggest earthquakes they ever had in that country. I 
said it's really no big deal because all we get from California is lettuce. We, right? Fruits and nuts. I'm making a joke. Just making a joke. It's just a joke. I don't know any of that. Hey, I don't know any of that, but it's very interesting to think that we didn't stand with Israel last week and that bridge collapsed within hours. See, the Old Testament is, is a type and a pattern of how God works. And when nations of the world, hey, seek God, God blesses that. There's no question that our founders, our forefathers, were not perfect people at all. Not at all. But they sought God the best they could. And God's blessed our nation. Right? As we fall away from God, God, it's the same pattern of Israel. It's the same thing Israel did over and over and over. And like the United States thinks we're forever going to be blessed by God and, and our enemies can't touch us or, or whatever. Are you not God of heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might? So that no one is able to withstand you? Lord, you're the one. And we seek you and we know it all comes from you. And that you're stronger than every, every army God, you're more capable than any other person thing, you know. You're, you're the greatest of great. You created everything, Lord. Why are we not seeking you all the time? Lord, why do we just lift our hands now? And why do we get real, real serious about you, Lord, when there's trouble coming? I think it's great what Bev said to us. I thought that was great, you know. I ask myself questions all the time. I ask myself a question all the time. Lord, am I going to praise you today? Lord, Lord, in all that's going on in my life, do I have time to fit you in? Do I have just a minute, Lord, to tell you how great you are? Do I, do I have a chance tonight to sing with my brothers and sisters and just let it rip, you know? Lord, get my hands up. Lord, just tell you how great you are, Lord. And I don't need to have a trial. I don't need to have some big problem, Lord. I just praise you because you're God in it all. Right? And no one is able to stand against you. Are you not God who drives out the inhabitants of the land before your people Israel and give, gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? <laughs> I also feel like he's not, he's like reminding God of who he is. You know, I try when I pray not to say, oh God, you're the creator of the heavens and the earth. I might say, Lord, I thank you for creating heaven and earth, you know what I mean? But you know you created, Lord, I. There was a boy, I, I shouldn't tell these stories, but I was working with a boy today, and, and uh, he's one of those boys that, I don't know, he just hadn't worked that much with us, you know, and, and we're laying some floor today, which is, ugh, but we're laying some floor today, and there was a piece we had to cut, you know, and I'd already measured it, already cut it, and was handed, had it in my hands, you know. And that boy looks at me and he says, uh, the next piece is right there. I've already got it cut in my hands. And I said, the next piece is right there. Really? I never thought about that. Then I slapped him in the belly with the piece I had cut and said, here it is. Oh. And I thought about that. You know, do I do that with God? God, do I tell you stuff you already know? I, I Lord, I, I shouldn't be telling you, and I see him kind of doing it here, and the Lord doesn't rebuke him for it, but God, aren't you aren't the strongest there is? Aren't you over every nation, Lord? Aren't you the one? Certainly you're the one, Lord. He goes on here. And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, so he's telling them all these things. We built a sanctuary for you. 
And, you know, he's kind of saying, hey, Lord, Lord, remember, we haven't forgot about you. We built a building here for you, you know, and, and it's for your name. And the Lord's up there saying, boom, here's your peace. Right? Like, really? Where do you think I've been? I don't know. I hate to try to outsmart God. That doesn't work. You know what I mean? If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our afflictions, and you will hear and save. I just want to say, duh. And, and, and the scripture records this because the scripture wants us to hear, you know, the Lord, hey, will we'll hear and save, right? But people of faith already know. I, I don't approach God and say, Lord, are you listening? I shouldn't have to go to the Lord and say, Lord, do you remember the other day? I have enough faith in God to, to know when I pray, God knows exactly where I am. That's what's so wonderful about faith, you know. God, you've walked with me this. I don't have to fill you in on nothing. You know. Lord, I'm standing on this stage right now. You know that. Lord, I need you right now. You know that. There's nothing wrong with saying, God, help me. I can't do it without you. He knows that too. I guess there ain't too much I can say that you don't already know. But the beautiful thing about this is he's going to the Lord. He's saying, Lord, I recognize you as all powerful. I recognize you have an all authority. I recognize, Lord, you're bigger than my enemies. I, I recognize, Lord, there's a place here we built for you. And God, when we're in trouble, we'll just stand in front of your temple, Lord. And, and you'll hear us and you'll save us. That's what I, I know you will. I know you will. God, that's who you are. Now, we speak this to each other all the time in church. But the next time we have a problem... We go to the freak out zone, right? Now, God loves me. I'm his kid. God loves you. You're his kid, right? There's something called grace, right? Grace is God's, God working with you, hey, to grow you up into what you're supposed to be. God will cut you some slack until you grow up, but you can't stay a baby forever. You, you shouldn't count on grace forever, although we'll need grace forever. You can't count on the same grace. You need to be growing up in who you are. Does that, does that make sense? That's how I believe. God is trying to establish us. We're going to see it here. You know, the big line in this chapter is, this battle ain't yours, it's the Lord's. That's the big line in this chapter, you know. And the Lord says, listen, if you'll do right, I will establish you. I will make you something strong. And everybody will fear you. And nobody will touch you. It's the big lines in this chapter. And now, here are the people of Ammon, and Moab, Mount Seir, who you would not let Israel invade when they came into the land of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, and turned them and turned from them and did not destroy them. Lord, these are the ones you let us leave. Now, do you think there's stuff the Lord allows to remain in your life? Until the moment, uh, there's stories like this that cause me to believe I don't have to worry about everything in my life. I just have to worry about the things the Lord puts in my life. Does that make sense? And I don't want to talk about, you know, some people say this is a sin or that's a sin. Listen, you don't have to worry about sin issues in your life until the Lord convicts you of it. Does that make sense? But once the Lord convicts you of it, then he'll give you the strength to do it. Uh, did I say that right? Not that sin, but, but God, I, I have imperfect kids, right? Oh, do I ever. But, but I'm an imperfect kid. And there's moments, God knows the timing, where these enemies will raise up in my life. And the Lord says, we're going to deal with those now. Does that make sense? Do you all get that whole thing? It's so funny 
Sometimes when I get out of here quick to go catch somebody in a parking lot, there'll be people in our church parking lot smoking. And they'll be out there puffing away until they see me come out and then they'll hide their cigarettes. It's so funny. I, I've, been, I've been in Walmart and, and the Pepsi aisle used to be right across from the alcohol part, right? And I'd walk in there and there'd be people in our church looking at alcohol. As soon as I walk up the aisle, they turn around and look at the Pepsi. And I, and I always say, yeah, the Lord sent me out here just now. <laughs> but I always tell people, listen, you don't have to be afraid of old Mark. You don't have to be afraid of Mark. But if the Lord's convicting you of something being wrong, it's time to deal with it, right? So God left these enemies there. Till the moment he was going to have them deal with that, right? Does that make sense to you? There's a timing in your life. You can't get it all right, all right away. But as time moves on, as God's trying to establish you in who he wants you to be, God will bring these things up because you're supposed to defeat them by faith in God. I could really get soapboxy here. I could really start talking about all the things that people. <sighs> and what you don't want to do is take too long to move out of what God's trying to get you out of. Does that make sense? Maybe I'll stop there. Here they are, reward us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. So, you know what he's saying? Well, Lord, you didn't let us beat those guys when Joshua was coming in here. You saved them now, and now they're trying to come in here and throw us out of here. No, the teaching is... God will allow these enemies to rise up for you to have victory over them. In the right timing, when you're able to do it, hey, for the test in your life, and I believe, I, I'll just throw this out there, I believe for every single one of us, there are these major decision points, major testing moments in our life. Major. I tell you this story about my son. My son Charlie was going through architecture school. He was married, had a couple kids. He was working at UPS starting at like 4.30 in the morning. He had to be up all night a lot doing these big architecture projects when they were due. I'd go over there a bunch and, and work with him all night. I'd cut little pieces of the wood, popsicle sticks usually, cut them, and he'd glue them together. And we'd work all night long trying to get a big model done that he had to turn in. And there was a night when Charlie just said, Dad... I'm so tired. This big project's due. It's 50% of my grade. I can't do it. I got no gas. And I looked at Charlie. I said, Charlie, this is one of those moments in your life. Shut up and get busy. This is one of those moments. You press past and you do the right thing right now. If you can just rise to the hard moment in your life and, and do what's really difficult. It, it, listen, it's just another 12-hour period, man. you got to get through another 12-hour period. Just suck it up. Let's go. You can do this. He said, Dad, I think I'm going to drop out. I cut the nest little piece and said, glue. And let's just take this a piece at a time, brother. Let's just do this one. You know what I mean? And he made it through that day. A year or so after that, we sit there at the big stadium. Obama was speaking. And he graduated waiting with an architecture degree. In my life, there's been several major... Mark, you've got a fine engineering job that you love. It pays good. Everything is good. Are you going to step out of that to go pastor a little church? Not knowing where that thing's going? Yeah. John every now and then tells me, hey, you're pretty good at that. You ought to think about doing that for a living. 
And I doubt it every time because I'm like, ah. Jamie and I wanted to downsize because our kids were growing up and leaving home. And the Lord was telling us to big size, super size. And we stepped into payments beyond what we ever, we just stepped by faith. And God met a big financial need in our life, just a miracle. So there are moments in your life that will define you. I, I don't know if anybody's in one of those right now, but there's these moments in your life that you've got to get it right. Listen, there may be so much pressure to do the thing you want to do. You understand me? Sometimes there's so your feelings get all worked up and everything. Rah, rah, rah. Listen, you got to be super careful when there's life changing decisions you're making. It could be the test of your life. There are decisions you make you can't recover from. Does that make sense? There are decisions you make you can't you can't undo that. And, and, and right now, this sounds crazy, but we're too close to the finish line for anybody to be making wrong decisions. Right? So, Lord, they're going to come up here and kick us out of this land. I think I got 30-some verses in three minutes. Oh God, you will not judge them, for we have no power against the great multitude that's coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. What a great line. He finally says something, God, we're just looking to you. Right? They all stood before the Lord, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon that guy right there in the midst of the assembly, said, listen, you inhabitants of Jerusalem and uh, King Jotham, thus says the Lord, do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. There's a certain time, Lord, this is, I can't beat that enemy anyhow, so Lord, I just know you can. Lord, you're the heavyweight champion of the world. Mike Tyson is nothing to you, man. You drop him in a second, right? My problem is not bigger than you. It's never been and never will be. My struggles, Lord, I can find you in them and be blessed. Tomorrow you will go down against them and surely come up against them and find them at the end of the brook, and there they are. And you don't need to fight this battle. You will not need to fight this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you, O Judah? Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. Go stand in the place you're supposed to stand, for the Lord is with you. That's what the prophet said. Quit your whining and get out there. The battle isn't yours. It belongs to the Lord. Now show up and I'll do the fighting. Right? And Joseph has bowed his head, face to the ground, blah, 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 and worship the Lord. And the Levites and the children of and they all lifted a loud voice. And early in the morning, they went to the wilderness of that. And to hear me, O Judah, and have us in Jerusalem, believe the Lord, your God. And, he, and you shall be established. You know, it's these battles that you win where God establishes you. Did anybody get that? I wish I could talk. I wish I had more time. It's the battles that you win where you say, yes, we have this ground. The Lord has given us this ground. This ground belongs to the Lord, and the Lord has allowed us to be established in it. Right? And you shall prosper. The other people uh, praise the Lord in mercy endures forever. And they began to sing praise. And, God, and the Lord set up ambushes against Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. And they couldn't come against Judah, for they were defeated. And the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir and utterly killed and destroyed them. And when they made an end to the inhabitants of Seir, they helped destroy one another. You 
you know what's happening here, don't you? Mount Seir said, we'll sneak around here and we'll get them on this side. Well, then they stuck their heads out and they thought it was, they thought it was Judah, you know what I mean? So they begin to kill. Next thing you know, they're so confused and who's the, who they're just killing each other. The people of Judah are going. <laughs> when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude and they were, and were dead bodies falling on the earth and no one had escaped. And Jehoshaphat and the people came to take away the spoil, and they found among the abundance of valuables on dead bodies, precious jewelry, and stripped them off, them, off themselves more than they could carry away. And there was three days gathering the spoil. There was so much. It took them three days to strip their bodies of jewels and gold and weapons and It doesn't even look like they battled. Now there's a big story. I'm, I'm past time. But there's a big understanding in this chapter. A multitude is coming to overtake you. You ever feel overwhelmed by your situations? Not ever going to take you. No. Quit thinking. Quit thinking defeat. What has the Lord not done to purchase your victory? Right? Let's do it. Are you not the God of heaven? Are you not the God who gave me life? Are you not the God that created everything? Are you not the one that's bigger than my enemy? Are you not the one bigger than, than my diagnosis? Are you not the one bigger than, than what I'm thinking right now? Are you not bigger than my enemies? Are you not bigger than every darn thing around me? Lord, I trust in you. Amen. Father, we thank you for time together tonight. we just trying to preach who you are. And how people relate to you, God. This man, this king, Lord, was seeking you, God, and you established him by giving him great victory. They didn't even have to raise a, a shield or spear. They didn't have to run a horse, Lord, or fire a bow. All they had to do, God, was show up on the battlefield and collect the spoil. Lord, there's victory in Jesus. There's always been victory in God. The children of God always have victory in God. There's battles that come. Battles will come and come and come. You don't stop us from the battle. You just give us victory as we trust you. God, just let that sink into us. Let that, let that do something, Lord, because fear is coming upon our nation. Things are coming upon the nation, Lord. And you're trying to establish us in the middle of the multitude. Cause us to remember the word of God spoken to us tonight and never forget it. Cause us to apply it to our lives. Lord, it causes us to stand strong in the time of battle, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. We love you. Come back and see us.